So for completeness, let's just draw out what these actually look like at the cellular level. So I don't have room to put meiosis 2 to the side like you should do on your paper. But let's now take these and draw them going through the meiosis 2 division to actually show how these haploid products of meiosis ar arise. So the top cell is just the little a and then a big B on a translocated chromosome. So that's the first product there, and that is not functional because it doesn't have a proper haploid set. It's missing the tip of the red chromosome, and it's duplicated for the tip of the black chromosome. The next one down is a little a allele, now on a translocated chromosome, and paired up with that is a big B on a translocated one. So, translocated chromosome. So there's the second cell. And this is functional because it has a proper haploid set. The next one down, the top cell, is going to be the big A on a normal chromosome structure and the little b on a normal structure. And again, that's going to be functional as well. No problem there. Now, I haven't left myself much room, but let's see if we can squeeze in the last cell. Okay, so the last cell, this one down here, is a big A on a translocated structure. And it's paired up with a little b on a non-translocated structure. So if you can just imagine that being a cell. And that is not functional as well. So these ones will be functional, and these ones will be non-functional products of meiosis. And importantly, a big A with a little b is a recombinant. It's not one of the inputs. And likewise, a little a with a big B is a recombinant. It's not one of the inputs. What we'll go on to do in the next segment is to discuss what happens when we have a crossover in this area over here. And we'll turn to that next. Okay, now we're ready to discuss what happens with a single crossover event in this area here. And one aside that I'll put in right now is, if you remember back to three-point test crossing, where we discussed region 1, region 2, single crossover in region 1, no crossover in region 2, that sort of thing, that exact same strategy applies perfectly to this situation. We can treat this as region 1, we can treat this as region 2, and we can start to discuss, okay, single crossover in region 1 and no crossover in region 2, which is what we just did in the last segment. Now we're dealing with NCO1 and SCO2, and then we'll go on to deal with the double crossover situation as well. Okay, let's trace this one through. So on this side, over here, and now we need to consider the actual segregation patterns. So if we segregate like this, for this side, let's think about what's going on here. We have a crossover event that now puts a big B onto a normal chromosome structure. Now if that is going to survive, it needs to segregate with a normal 1. So we've got a normal 2 chromatid attached here with a big B on it. And if it's going to survive, it needs to go with a normal 1. So again, we need to segregate in this particular pattern. But depending on how you've drawn your alleles in a given question, you have to just carefully look through and decide, okay, which way is the segregation pattern going to go to preserve the recombination event that I'm interested in preserving? Another thing to mention right off the bat here, too, is that because of the independent assortment issue with a translocation heterozygote, half of everything dies. So if this event happens, half of the time it will survive with the appropriate segregation pattern, and half of the time it won't, simply because it will encounter the wrong segregation pattern with the other chromosome set. Okay, so if we take these across, we have normal chromosomes with a little a, with N1 going up, and then over on this side, we have the top chromatid was not involved in the crossover, and it's a translocation, and it has a big B on it, okay? Then the other chromatid is a big B, has a big B on it, but is now a fully red chromosome with a big B, okay? So that's that cell 
after meiosis 1. With what goes down, we have down here, we have this unchanged chromosome, the translocation chromosome that bears the big A alleles. And then with what's gone down here, the top chromatid was involved in the translocation, and it takes a little B allele and puts it onto a translocation chromosome. The lower chromatid was not involved, so it's a regular little b-bearing normal chromosome 2 structure. So that's what we get after meiosis 1 in this case. And as we see, as we'll see as we go on, we'll now segregate these to the meiosis 2 division. And again, some will survive and some won't. So meiosis 2, as before, is simply taking what's there from meiosis 1 and splitting it. So we'll now take that through and draw it as such. So top chromatid. So there's the first cell, and that's a non-functional cell. Next one down has that same little a and now has a big B on a normal second chromosome, full chromosome. And that is functional, and that is genetically little a with a big B. So that is recombinant. That's not one of the inputs. This is one way to get a recombinant to survive. Okay, next one down. We have a translocation chromosome with a big A on it. So translocation 1. And then next up is a translocation 2 with a little b on it. Okay. And that is functional as well. And that's a big A, little b recombinant. That's not one of the inputs either. Okay, the last one will be one that doesn't survive, but let's draw it out. So it's a translocation 1 with a big A on it. And then the next one down is a normal 2 with a little b on it. And this will not survive because it doesn't have a balanced haploid set. So here's what happens with a single crossover in this region to give us some recombinants. You'll notice that these are genetically the same recombinants that we did in the last video with the single crossovers over here. But what you'll notice if you compare this video and go back and look at the other video is the structures are different. So here we have a little a with a big B on normal structures, whereas when we were doing the crossover over here, we were taking a little a, crossing over, and putting it onto a translocated structure. So here we have little a, big B on normal structures, and in the previous example, we had little a with a big B on translocated structures. And in some questions, you can actually tell the difference between those two. The key is that this, say we were to go on test cross this whole, this organism, to a little a, little a, little b, little b tester with normal chromosome structures, then this organism would be fully fertile when it goes on to fuse. So it would be little a, little a, big b, little b, and its chromosome structures would be fully normal. So it itself would be fully fertile. It wouldn't have any sterility problems. Whereas in this case, we have this recombinant, so big A with little b on translocated structures. If that pairs up with a little a, little b on normal structures, then this progeny will itself be a reciprocal translocation heterozygote. And as a result, it itself will be semi-sterile or 50% sterile. So there's a way to distinguish between these categories. If you look back in the previous video, the big A with the little b with the crossover over here would have actually been on normal structures. So it, as a progeny, would be fully fertile. So fully fertile and semi-sterile semi -sterile as an attribute of progeny actually tells you what their chromosome structures are. Fully fertile organisms have normal structures. They're normal structure homozygotes. Semi-sterile individuals are reciprocal translocation heterozygotes because they themselves are semi-sterile. And that's not to be confused with things that simply don't survive. If it survives and it's semi-sterile, then it's a reciprocal translocation heterozygote. 
Okay, in the next segment, we'll discuss the double crossover event.